This is Tips and Tricks Part 2 for the Inventor 2015 Address User Day. This section is going to be looking at various tips including copying design, so how we can copy a design including its drawings within Inventor, how to send assembly features to multiple parts and various drawing tips including filtering of parts list, section view tips, quick dimension overrides, sketch hatching and associating text to views. Okay, so the first tip I wanted to go through was how to copy a drawing and all of the associated parts using Inventor only. So to use this tool, you need to make sure you have no documents open. So it's just showing you what we're copying in this example is one drawing, but it could be a whole host of drawings. So we're gonna close this down. Once it's closed, we'll have access to the tool under the Tools tab. So it's called iLogic Design Copy. So all we do from this section is select the project that we want to work with, which is the existing. So my tip is go straight to the drawings that you want to copy. You can see it breaks into categories. So within drawings, you can select an entire folder. In this example, I want to select a specific set of drawings or in this example, one drawing. By selecting the drawing, it gets all of the other associated parts, which is why I would go with drawings. If we click next, it proceeds to the next section of the copy. So we can create a new project. So it's like a, a pack and go, but with a rename, or we can use the source project, which is what we're looking for in this example, because we're creating a derivative for the same design. So all we do is create, uh, choose browse to select the location that we're creating our copied data in. So I have my folder selected. From there we can add a prefix and or suffix. So in this example we're going to do a logic suffix, so logic DC. You can see it previews the rename. We can make various adjustments, including renaming non-inventor files, deleting rules, or updating part number. Once we click Start, it copies the files, re-references them, and then it will give us a confirmation dialog and show us the results. You can see it's copied the necessary files and folder structure. If I open that file up, I'll be able to confirm that the changes have occurred. So we can see within the drawing, if we look at some of the references in the browser, it is now indeed referencing the suffix assembly of Logic DC. So it's a really powerful tool. The next feature we're going to look at is the ability to create features at assembly level and push that through into parts. So for those that are not aware, you have a 3D model tab available to you in the assembly environment. This enables us to create sketches and various types of cut features using our standard inventor modeling tools. So you'll see in this example, I've actually already pre-created a sketch. And I want to cut this through several parts. So there's actually three, four parts that are all interacting with one another. So it's easier for me to create it at, at assembly level. So on our 3D model tab, I can use my standard modeling tools like extrude, and I'm going to set it to extrude all the way through. So we can see we get a preview and it recognizes it needs to pass through several components. And I can see by looking at either end that the cuts are going all the way through. So if we take a look at any of these parts, We'll notice straight away that the holes are not being drilled on any of these components. So these features only exist at assembly level. So let's just take a look at one more part. So they only exist at assembly level and we want the ability to push that information into the parts, which we're going to do in a second. So the feature only exists in the assembly browser. So another tip before we continue you'll notice that two of the parts are currently being drilled that aren't required. So we can see just 
drilling through these two components. What you can do at assembly level is find the feature. If you expand it, it actually shows you which parts it's interacting with. You can select them and remove them as participants. The moment I do that, you can see the holes are no longer drilled. So that's definitely something I'm going to need to do in this example to have clean parts. Otherwise, I'd push information to components that aren't required. So I'm also going to unsuppress two additional cuts that I've created, which create recesses on either side of these inner plates. So at this point, I'm ready to start migrating these features. And there is a tool available to do that. The tool itself is available on the Autodesk Exchange app site. So it's something we've discussed in the past. If you Google Autodesk Exchange apps, it will come up straight away. There is a tool on there called the Feature Migrator, which is made by Autodesk. As long as you're on subscription, you can download and install this tool and it will be available at assembly level. So I've already got it installed on here. So what will happen is it will appear on the Tools tab. We have the Feature Migrator. If I select it, it adds an additional panel. So you'll find that this additional panel will identify features that can be migrated. We can do them one by one, or we can do them as a group, or small groups. So on the right click, you can see it offers me center parts. So in this example, I'm going to do them all together. So I right click, select center parts. Once I've done this, it will bring up a secondary dialog confirming the parts it's going to be sending it to. So three parts. It then gives us actions. So it allows us to suppress the assembly feature afterwards if it succeeds. And if it at part level fails on a component, you can suppress the failed feature, delete it. Again, you get various choices. As part of creating the feature at part level, we can render it. So this is a good way of confirming that it's worked because we will be able to visually see. So in this example, I'm going to give it machined aluminium effect. So what we should see is that it will go silver on the cut areas. So we can also go to a detail report if we want. And if I select OK, it will push that information through to the components. And as you can see, components have changed. If we want to confirm, we simply open up the parts to check. So we can see straight away the extrusion exists. If we go to any of the components, we can see that it's now exist in existence. And it's applied that render style of machined aluminium. So it's a really powerful tool. Now you have the ability to actually update the features still at assembly level. Um, if you want to update your part after that, it's a manual pull process. So in this part, you'll see that the feature migrator panel also works. And we can actually expand features. And you can see we get this status panel where we can see it's currently up to date. And if I made a change at assembly level, I could refresh this and update. So a very useful, very powerful tool. So the next tip we're going to look at is the ability to filter information within a parts list. We can see at the moment we have a couple of items currently identified with balloons. I, in this example, only want to show ballooned items. So since 2009, you've had the ability to edit parts lists and apply filtering. Simply by selecting the filter tool, we can start to apply various types of filters. We can filter based on view reps. We can specify number ranges, filter out purchased items, standard content. In this example, we only want to show ballooned items, but we can apply multiple filters if necessary. Once I OK that, we can see all the information is now filtered to only show ballooned items. If we balloon additional items, the parts list will update. So we're also going to create a section in this example.
So a quick tip more than anything is the fact that we can actually break a view when we create a section. Simply by going to modify we can break alignment. This gives us the ability to reposition a view within a drawing or onto a different sheet if necessary. I also may need to tidy up the view by rotating it. We can also do that simply by right clicking we can rotate and we can select an edge and for example make it lie vertical. I'm also in this example needing to crop the view to reduce the information. So we have on the modify panel the ability to crop, a very underused tool by many users. Crop tool allows us to specify a circle or rectangle. So in this example I want to create some text to identify the fact that this is a section view but it's been cropped to only show one side. So we can create text like we normally do. So an age old problem in Inventor is the fact that if we have our crop text, our text to show that it's cropped, if we move a view we can see the text doesn't move with it. So it's been a common problem, problem in previous releases. We can actually delete that text. Uh, so a tip is you can actually use leader text. So if we use leader text, we can put text in. If we put text in and select OK, we can see we, we may have leader text there, but we can actually right click and delete the leader. And we remain with text, but the text is associative to the view. So one problem with this command is the format might not come out as you expect it to. So an additional tip is rather than doing that, simply select the view, create a sketch. Once you've created a sketch, use the text command. So with the text created, we can position where we want it to be finish the sketch and the text is associated to the view. Okay, it's a, a useful tip when wanting to associate text to a view. Also in this example I want to illustrate a component that hasn't been modelled. So we want to show that a seal exists in the middle where these two bushes are placed. So without the component existing there a lot of people assume it's not possible to do that where in fact it is. Again, same as what we've just done, we can select the view, so as long as we get the perimeter up here, the box, we can create a sketch, and we can start to sketch the, uh, an area which we can then create a fill or a hatch on. So before I do that, I'm actually going to project geometry that could be useful. And I'm going to draw a box where I want my hatch to exist can then use the fill hatch region command. You can see it picks up closed regions within this current sketch. Once I've selected my region I can apply a hatch, I can change my pattern. In this example we want to show a fill, I can change the color of that fill if required. And again we finish the sketch and we have our hatch fill. So the next tip is looking at how we can section through an angled hole. So it's a common problem. For many users they struggle at trying to create a section and align it to an object. It could also be a case that the section you're creating, you want to only show visible edges only, but you still want it to be aligned to an object. So we're going to show you how you can do that. So another quick tip is the fact that you can copy a view. So we're going to create a separate sheet. And I'm going to paste my view into that sheet. So as I said, I want to create a section view that's aligned to this hole. And when I start the section command and select my view, you'll notice that it's very hard to pick up a midpoint where 
I can't, essentially. So my tip is really, when I do a section, I often just draw it away from the sheet itself, uh, from the part itself, not worrying, trying to avoid it aligning to anything. Once I've got my section line roughly drawn, I can continue. Essentially at this point, we're getting an auxiliary view or an elevation. I'm gonna accept what I've got there. Once you've created the section view, what I'd recommend doing is right clicking on it and performing an edit. You have a little sketch symbol, that's the one we're going for. Once we've edited that line, it takes us into sketch mode. So you can see it makes our sketch tools available. So to accurately align it to an object, it's very similar to what we were doing for the hatch command. We can project geometry we may need to reference. So in this example, I've selected the two edges of the hole and the circle, and I can start to constrain it. So for example, I could do a coincident constraint from the middle of the line to the center, and I could do a parallel constraint Again, parallel line to the hole. That is exactly as I want it to be. Again, because it's constrained at the, because it's constrained at the center, it'll be equal either end, the overhang. And I can even be even more accurate and apply a dimension to that line if I want it to be very accurate length. Once I'm happy with what I've applied, I finish the sketch. And again, it's updated. Once again, as we said before, we can break views. And we can realign. So we can use the rotate command. And remember, you have the ability to realign views simply by selecting from the modify panel the type of alignment you want. In this example, I want to align it horizontally. And there we have it. Another quick tip is the fact that you do have the ability to control edge visibility. Remember you can select edges and switch off visibility on the right click. So if there's edges that show up in a, in a drawing that you don't want to show, you can remove them from visibility. So coming back to our first view, the last tip I want to show you is a tool that's been in for a few years now. We can see we've got several dimensions. They're quite untidy at the moment. On the annotate tab, we have the arrange command. We can select dimensions, right click, select OK. Dimensions are automatically rearranged and tidied. Really, really good command. Definitely underused. Another quick one is we can edit a dimension. Many of you are already aware of the fact you can do this. I want to put in a diameter symbol. Maybe I want to also change the precision. Again, you may not be aware, you can do it on the right click. Now I want to do that to several dimensions here. So a quick tip, if you want to apply a standard format, maybe you've added text or symbol or precision changes, simply right click and you can copy properties. You can window select dimensions or click on individual dimensions. So if I window select, it applies the same precision and it applies the same prefix diameter symbol to all of those dimensions. 